under the guise of a motivational seminar in which I teach my skills to a group of middle management businessmen and women, can I get any of them to steal £100,000 in what they believe is a genuine armed robbery? That's the show. This is The Heist. So, a week ago, I arranged for them to take part in what they now think is a, a piece of unfilmed academic research at a university and nothing to do with the show, uh, supposedly looking into the effects of punishment on learning. And they believe now that this is part of their growth process. In fact, it was a reenactment of a powerful experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram in 1963 to look at how normal people can commit atrocious acts simply because they're following orders. Milgram's parents were Jewish refugees in World War II and his pioneering work speaks volumes about the nature of responsibility. It's being filmed with covert cameras. Thank you. Lovely. Hello. Hello. They're introduced to an actor pretending to be another participant. You didn't come from the same room? No. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, no. you don't know each other. No, so. no. But we don't actually know how punishment affects learning. After a brief introduction, our subjects are tricked into thinking they've chosen their role as teachers in the experiment. And if you could just tell me what your positions are. Learner. Learner and teacher. Learner. <laughs> our subjects observe the learner being instructed by the scientist who is just another actor. This electrode is connected to a generator in a second room. We right. might be going with the teacher. Okay. Just make sure that we have a good contact with the skin and so it doesn't cause any blistering or burning, is that comfortable? That's OK, yeah. Yeah, and we just place these straps around your arms yeah. just to avoid avoid any excess movement. Those aren't too tight. No, that's OK. No. And the teacher will read out some word pairs to you. Blue girl... The learner is told he's going to be asked a series of memory questions by the teacher. He will have to remember word pairs and then correctly remember them when offered multiple choices. If the answer's incorrect, you will receive an electric shock. The teacher is then taken next door and shown the generator, which ranges from 15 volts all the way up to a lethal 450 volts. The domestic electricity supply in the UK is, of course, 240 volts. Our teachers are given the list of questions and told to increase the voltage each time the learner gets a question wrong. They are then given an example of a low voltage shock. And try and estimate in volts the amount of shock you feel you're getting. OK. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do you know how much that was? Enough. 75. It was actually 45. Just oh, my God. Teacher, begin. Shoe, horn, steam. The clean. point of this test is to see whether the teachers, our subjects, will call a stop to the experiment or continue to the point where they are administering seemingly lethal electric shocks to the victim simply because the scientist is telling them to. That's correct. <coughs> According to plan, our accomplice provided many wrong answers. Each protest was coordinated to a particular shock voltage on the generator and his responses were played via a CD. That's wrong, 150 volts. The correct, the correct answer is Captain Shu. <coughs> Cup. That's wrong. 225 volts. Oh! Take it off! I've had enough of this! <laughs> he's in a lot of pain. Continue, please. But he's, he's, not, he's not comfortable. We must continue to the end of the experiment. Well, the learner likes it a lot. He has to go on until he's learnt the words correctly. OK. Forest. That's wrong. 240 volts. Are you sure this is not causing any lasting damage? He sounds in, like he's in a lot of pain. Well, the shocks might be painful, they're not harmful. What, what does that mean, though, they're not harmful? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting you. When you say that they're, they're, they might be painful, but not harmful... They cause no long-term damage. OK, so what does that mean? That it doesn't leave any scars? It causes no damage. 
this seems very that seems very cold and calculated to me. This doesn't seem like a very anyway. Golden. That's wrong, mate. Three hundred volts. Staple, the options are diet, jar, balcony, and bowl. If the learner doesn't answer in a reasonable time, say four to five seconds, then you have to treat the answer as wrong and follow that procedure. Did you hear that, learner? Just any response, mate. Come on. Wild well, guess. Please continue. 345 volts if you're still with me. I'm sorry. I can't do this, honestly. Can we stop this experiment? Because I can't do this. this if I, you don't I... continue, we'll have to discontinue the experiment. <clears throat> yeah, OK, fine. That's fine. I'm not going to do this. Incorrect. 405 volts. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't know. Is someone want to check on him or something? It's just he's not making any noise now, and he was before. And well, I'm quite happy to go on, but I'm just a well, bit worried about. If you would continue. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried because he was. Like he, he was like complaining before about the. But no harm, no harm will come to him. But he's, he's not making any noise now. It's essential that we continue with the experiment. Balcony. Incorrect. Four hundred and fifty volts. I promise, he's not... It, it, it won't... Please, continue with the procedure. Like, you see, it hurts, but it's... Because it's like... <laughs> it says they're dangerous in a shot. It'll be all right, yeah? Please continue. OK, I think we'll discontinue the experiment there. All of the subjects were told the true nature of the experiment was to see how they would respond to authority and that it would eventually form part of this show. He is OK. I can tell you, yeah, he's absolutely fine. You actually weren't administering electric shocks to him at all. And he is, he is, he is. <laughs> <laughs> In the original Milgram experiment, psychologists were asked to predict how many people would continue to the point that they were administering the highest shock on the board. Their prediction was one-tenth of one percent. They were wrong. The results of our experiment were almost identical to the original. Over 50 percent of participants continued up to 450 volts. The majority of people will administer lethal electric shocks just because a guy in a white coat is telling them to. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450. So after the results of the Milgram experiment, I've now chosen my four subjects that will go forward for the heist. Bowl, bowl isn't forward, but... Phil was impressively resourceful when he was caught stealing sweets and held in his anguish during the Milgram experiment rather than defy the scientist. I did want to include a woman in the group. Jen was the only subject to take a long time to recover after the Milgram experiment, so I felt I shouldn't use her. Veronica didn't steal from the shop, so that left Vicky. Of all the subjects, she was the only one to have known the original Milgram experiment and call a halt to her involvement in it. Can I just say, I can't do this because I've heard of this experiment before. So I think she'll be quite interesting to use, although I, I don't know if she'll actually take the bait or not. Ali stole most from the shop, seems to be highly responsive, most outgoing, and seemed most happy to continue the experiment until he was stopped. Well, shouldn't it have made more notches on the thing? 
I'm sorry. Danny stopped the experiment, but in such an outspoken way that I suspected he would have real strength of character to bring out. It's not even reacting anymore. I'm going to teach them some genuine skills that I use, peppered with some spurious pop psychology, and quite a lot of bullshit. Very green, isn't it? What does green do? 